Welcome back to the shop. You know, I was getting ready to do another project earlier, and so I walked on my porch and found this piece of firewood from when we went camping last year. And let's see what I can do with it. So, over to the bandsaw here and I learned an awful lot today like hardwood that's all twisted up probably shouldn't be rammed into that blade because it does stop the motor um, however I did get it cut off and really really uneven so over to the jointer we go to try to even it out and this takes just a little bit probably a lot more than it should have considering uh, if I had slowed down I would have been fine and then once that side's good it'll be back over to the bandsaw. Now it's just a little too high so I went ahead and zipped off the top kind of quick so that's low enough and then started to even out the other side. Again, needing to slow down when going through there and it came up pretty good. So back over to the jointer to go ahead and square up that side of it all and that way I have a nice 90 degree corner on that one side of the log. Now, when we go back over to the bandsaw here, I decided I want to throw my fence on. So, using my combination square, I decided how uh, thick I wanted the lid to be. And once I got it all set and adjusted here, I went ahead and tightened it down, and then clamped it on with a little spring clamp. Use my miniature combination square to make sure that my fence was nice and straight. And then once that was good, I went ahead and used those other uh, ratchet clamps that are on the back of the fence there to tighten it down and made sure it was nice and secure. Uh, with that all done, it's time to head on back to the warp speed and cut off our lid. Now, part way through, I noticed that the blade was wandering just a little bit more than I liked it to, so I lowered down the guide, and I cleared up the problem right away. Now, I use that little block as a push block right at the end. Of course, my shoulder's in the way and you can't see that. And this is just a nice little look there. Head on over to the workbench, flip it over, and then try to pick out the Forstner bit that I wanted to make sure that it would fit all the way down through the whole log. I got lucky and pulled it the first time and just start hogging out material. Now, once that entire side was all done, I went ahead and cleaned up some of those chips and then went ahead and started boring in between all the holes to get out some more of the material. I found this to be a lot easier and probably a heck of a lot safer than using the router just because of how narrow the piece was. Over to the workbench, take some sandpaper, put it down on a tile, and sharpen up my chisel. This worked out really, really well. Uh, I probably could have used a better quality sandpaper, but this is what I had on hand and I just had to go up to 220. Anyway, since this is kind of a, a cheap chisel and I just really wanted to hog out the stuff. As you can see, I've given it a little shave chest there. Wasn't quite sharp enough, so I went back and then got it ready. Brought it over to the bench and started evening up all those holes with my joiner's mallet. And then cleaning up in between. Now, I tried a whole bunch of different ways to hold this piece in place and, you know, didn't really think about it until after I shut the camera off and then I did actually go ahead and clamp it to the bench which you'll see in a little bit here. Yep, finally clamped it in place and I cleaned it all out. Looks good, clean the bench and to make sure it's going to fit right. Now, as you can see here, I went ahead and put in some magnets. 
I uh, also put some little pieces of nail in the top there to hold them in place. And then put a little bit of uh, green felt inside the inside the trough there where the wand goes. So it looks like a real log. Not too shabby. Share and subscribe. Stay tuned, we've got more coming.